information of the patient and uh, what's on the sample for example and they usually come in a glass with formaldehyde and then we have to register them and give them a processing okay. mm. and then here is some of the benches that we use for taking out the samples and when we take out the samples we put them in these cassettes with the uh, patient number and they also have a code that you can scan afterwards because much of the process here is done by coding and scanning. So we, after this step, there's no patient information, there's no names basically. Oh yeah, that's only it's the, anonymous. Yeah, anonymous only the sample of the only the num number of the sample. And we also have bigger benches for the doctors where they process the bigger samples like lungs or uh, kidneys or intestines. Okay. because it's divided in two. So the technicians do the smaller samples, like the skin samples or uh, oral samples, and the doctors do the big ones. And this is what the benches look like. Yeah. And here are all their samples. Wow. As you can see, we have quite a queue now, because it's almost summer, so everybody are busy with taking out as much samples as possible before the summer vacation comes. Mm. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and then when we're done with this step, um, we have to process them because mm -hmm. when they come in, they're in formaldehyde. Uh, but we can't do anything with them in formaldehyde. We have to have them in paraffin so that we can work with them. These are the machines that we use for processing. Uh, this one is called a VIP. What's it called? VIP? It's called VIP. Tissue VIP. Tech VIP. Okay. And this one is called Pelores. Uh, so in this machine we have two retorts for sample processing and these only have one each. And we can, uh, we can process up to 300 samples or cassettes. Uh -huh. And this, the running time for each process is 14 and a half hours. So we put them on the end of the day around 3 o'clock and then we process them throughout the night. So when we come in the morning at 7 o'clock they're all done so then we have to manually embed them or automatically embed them in paraffin. So when that process is done, mm -hmm. we have to go either in here with the manual, uh, with the automatic processing. So we put them inside the machine. Manually embedded, we use these molds 
in metal. Okay. So we put the sample in the bottom and then we add the wax or the paraffin and then we put the cassette with the sample ID on top. Oh, yeah. So it keeps going all the way. So in that way we know what kind of uh, tissue it is and also how many cassettes there are in one sample. Because one sample, uh, one patient sample can have like one cassette or up to 50 cassettes depending on how big it is. Oh my if you take out the, an entire breast, it can amount to 80 cassettes sometimes depending on how difficult it is to localize the cancer or not. Wow, and like the samples that the technicians take out, it's usually just one cassette per sample. And we have here we have an ice plate where we put the mold on top so that the paraffin can uh, can become hard um, equally, so that the that the coldness comes up equally uh, through the paraffin. Because if it doesn't uh, freeze at the same rate throughout the paraffin. It can create cracks, which makes it difficult to section afterwards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm, so the wax has to be as smooth as possible when it's frozen. Um, let's see. And here, this is what it looks like when it's man manually embedded. Yes. So as you can see, the cassettes are quite different from the automatic to the manual. In the manual, we have a, a like a plastic. Uh, container that we put inside them, we clips them in. Whereas here they have a lid on top where the sample is inside. Mm -hmm. So in here we have processed a very urgent uh, patient sample. So we take just take the uh, rack out and then we close the lid because now we have to take and clean inside the retort. So here it says that you have to do it quick clean and these are the steps that we have. It's cleaning with tissue care and then cleaning with 100% ethanol and a drying station. So we just press run and then it automatically starts. machine asks you to place okay. the basket back inside because we also have to clean the basket before we can use them again because the paraffin and the formaldehyde do not mix together and they can also affect the processing uh, step. And here it just says how long the cleaning uh, step takes. It's 34 minutes and we're going to start it at uh, ASAP. So now it's at the first step, which is, which is the tissue care. So you can see that it's going to take from this container into this retort and clean it. And then when it's done with the tissue care steps, it'll go over to the cleaning ethanol and continue with that. So now that the uh, sample has been processed, we have to manually embed it. And this is a small sample. It's just a pieces of uh, pistol biopsy. So they take it with a very thin needle. So for this, I need a mold, a very small one. And this is the liquid paraffin. So I carefully take them out. And it's important that the tweezer is also warm and clean because if the tweezer is cold, the sample would just stick to it and it's impossible to remove it unless it's warm. And these kind of samples that are from needles are quite delicate, so you have to be careful when you take them out. It's also important to make sure that you take everything that's inside the cassette as well, so that not, not any sample is lost, especially with so little that we have here. And now I'm just scraping the pillow that we use to put the samples in to make sure that there's nothing left. And when I'm done, I just 
break the upper part of the cassette off because we don't need that anymore. And this is a cold plate that we use because we have to make sure that all these pieces are on the same level uh, for sectioning because if they're on different levels, we're going to section them. You might um, section off some pieces of the sample and you might not reach uh, all the pieces at once. So then I just take it over to the cold plate and start pressing down carefully to get them on the same level. And as you can see that the paraffin is becoming hard and the tissue is sticking to the bottom. So when I'm sure that everything is on the same level, I take the top of the cassette with the patient number and add some more paraffin because we also have to make sure that the cassette sticks to the paraffin and the sample itself. And you just press down while it's on the cold plate and maybe add a little bit more paraffin and then you put it on to the facing part. So after maybe 5-10 minutes all the paraffin will be uh, hard and then we can take it off the mold. And these are just the um, uh, waste that we don't need to keep anymore and we keep them in here so that when the person who is doing the coordination with the uh, cassettes uh, when she has scanned them in at her station she knows that it's okay and all the sample is there and then she can empty this yes and now I can tell you about the uh, processing of the machines why we have to take them from formaldehyde to paraffin uh, because paraffin does not mix with liquids like water or alcohol. So if we want to manually embed or automatically embed the sample in paraffin, uh, all the liquid has to be um, removed from the sample completely. So the first step is formaldehyde uh, because we have to make sure that the sample has been uh, properly preserved because the formaldehyde makes sure that the that the tissue does not rot uh, and that is also completely uh, processed because if it's not completely uh, if it's still raw uh, there are certain uh, staining processes that we cannot complete because the staining it will not uh, fix to the uh, tissue so if we want to do like an immune histochemistry analysis for example with some hormones for breast cancer and if the breast tissue is not properly uh, fixated in the formaldehyde uh, the hormone uh, the hormone receptors will not stick to it and therefore we cannot tell if it is a receptor for estrogen or anything else so the first step is formaldehyde to make sure that it's um, completely processed and then we start gradually uh, removing all the water from the tissue. So we start with the 70% and then we go over to the 96% and then 100%. And with the 100%, uh, all water has been removed from the tissue. And when that is done, we go over to a chemical called tissue care, which prepares the tissue for the paraffin part. And the paraffin step or the paraffin embedding of the tissue is the last step. Uh, and the reason why we use paraffin is because we embed the tissue in paraffin and we also section them in paraffin. Uh, so now that the sample has been embedded, uh, the technician is now um, sectioning the uh, block. But the first thing that she has to do is make sure that she gets to the level where the tissue is by removing the excess paraffin that's on top. And also, since this is the one that's automatically embedded, you also have to cut off the plastic that surrounds the tissue. And then when she's done, she puts them on ice. And the reason why she does that is because when the wax is very cold, it's easier to section into very thin um, sections. Because when she is done, she has to uh, put the tissue on a glass like this with the patient information here. Uh, if this machine prints it out for us, the only thing we need to do is scan the block and then it's printed out for us. And she has to put the sample on this glass. 
and the wax will automatically um can we test the panels? Stick to hmm? stick onto Yeah, stick to the glass. And then when we're done. This is what one glass will look like. So here you have the, the tissue. Mm -hmm. so the, on the black background. On yeah. the so here we have the tissue on the glass. And the wax has been part, partially melted because we put it uh, in warm. And the reason why we also have to warm the slides up afterwards is to make sure that the tissue will stick to the glass. Because when we're done with this step, we then have to put them for staining. And the staining process can be a little bit harsh to the tissue, so it might fall off during the staining if we haven't heated it up properly. And when we stain, uh, when we're going to stain them, we put them in these racks uh, because that's what the machine uses. And the staining process is in here. Um, and this is our main machine. This is where we do all the HE staining, which is So it does. It has a similar process to what it does in the processing machines. It has to start with the heat to make sure that the the paraffin and the tissue uh, sticks to the glass and melts to the glass. And then it goes into tissue care. And the tissue care removes the excess paraffin that's left in the glass. But the problem with tissue care is that it doesn't mix with the um, water. So we have to remove it by putting it in 100% uh, ethanol. And then we have to wash them back here. So here's one, one uh, rack that's in the watering. Uh, it's in the washing part. And then when that's done, uh, that's when you can start the staining process. And the red liquid that you can see there, that's the eosin. And that makes sure that you can see the pseudoplasma in the cell. Well, the blue one for hemotoxin, that stains the nucleus of the cells. So that gives you a very good view of what the cell looks like and what the nucleus looks like. If it's compact or if it's more, if it's bigger, what's the shape of it? And also here we have um, different baskets uh, full of uh, ethanol in either 70%, 96%, and 100%. And the reason why we have that is because we use it for um, further differentiating and cleaning of the stains. Because we also want to remove the excess eosin or hematoxylin so it doesn't give any interference. But we also want to make sure that the differentiation of the different nucleuses is as best as it can be. So when it's done all that, it goes into the last step, which is cleaning off all the excess water and the staining in 100% ethanol. And those are two steps, the two 100 ethanols. And the last step is silane. And silane is a chemical very similar to tissue care. And we use silane uh, to um, uh, put um, a protective plastic on top of the tissue. So this machine does it for us automatically. And then when it's done, the sample will look like this. So this is a, uh, a glass that has been stained and the tissue has been covered by a piece of plastic. So now the doctor or the pathologist can microscope them and give a diagnosis of the sample. before the slides go out to the pathologists. And in this part, uh, we gather all our slides and we divide them into different groups like uh, intestines or skin or gy gynecology samples or urology or uh, sarcomas and so on. Uh, because the pathologists that we have, they have specialized in different uh, types of tissue and organs. So we want to make sure that we give them the organs that they have specialized in. Uh, and that's what they do here. They add up all the sections um, that they get throughout the week and they add them up to points. 
uh, to make sure that all the doctors get 24 points each. And here you can see the name of the doctors and what kind of group they belong to. And this is the last step. <laughs> So now after that she's, she has trimmed the block, she's now going to take the section of the cassette. And in this stage we're sectioning it on a 3.5 uh, micromillimeter level, which means that you get one level with the nucleus and the cells. Because if it's too thick, you won't be able to see the nucleuses properly because they'll all be lumped together on several levels and it'll be difficult to differentiate them from one another. So now she's transferring it to a wet glass and making sure that there's no wrinkle in the tissue because we want to remove as much of the wrinkles as possible. And this is cold water. Exactly the sample you mm -hmm. did now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now she's so gonna section the sample that we manually embedded. And this was also an, an urgent yeah, sample. An urgent so this sample. is a patient now at the hospital and yeah. actually right. and they need the answer quite urgently. Yeah. Mm. So when she's made sure that the sample or the the section has no wrinkles on it, she puts it into this warm bath, which can has a 48 degrees Celsius, and she does it to stretch out the paraffin and also the, the, the tissue itself. And the reason why we do this is because we want to make sure that there's no wrinkle in the tissue, but also that the tissue and the paraffin will attach itself to the glass and keep firm, but it won't move around anywhere on the glass. And since this is a special sample, she also needs one glass with the HE staining, but she also needs to stain for iron and reticulum and the mosom trichum. And those are stains that we usually do for liver samples, if there's an unknown reason for why the patient is sick. If the patient, for example, has uh, cancer in the liver, you usually just do a Alcyon Blue pass coloring, which will identify cells that produce uh, mucus. So as she's getting the section, she just puts them in the warm bath before she picks them up with the glasses that she needs. And the ones that she doesn't want, she just discards them and throws them with the other wax that we're not going to use. So now that she has the number that she needs, she just picks them up with the glass. how we uh, take out the samples that we received. So this is the workstation that we have. It's a little bit messy at the moment because the doctor used it earlier. Uh, so first thing I need uh, are gloves because you don't want to touch the formaldehyde with your hands because it is um, a possible uh, cancerous uh, chemical. And it could also give you a skin rash. And if you have like cuts on your fingers, it will sting very much. Mm. So always wear gloves when you're working with formaldehyde. So the gloves that we use are uh, specifically for this purpose. 
-hmm. And then when you're taking out the sample, you have to be logged in because we're ma we have to make sure that whoever takes out the sample can be traced back afterwards in case something happens or if there's something wrong. As I'm logging in, I just prepare the first sample. And what I do is that I always make sure that the number that we have given them in the lab um, is correct with the number that the dentist or the doctor took out. So I always have to double check that the name is correct and also the date of birth is correct. And we also have to make sure that the cassette that we print out also has the same lab number. So in that case, we avoid samples being mixed up because in cases that can be quite disastrous for the patients involved. And the program that we use to take out the samples is called a Unilab. So all the information on the patient is stored here. program is what we use to print out the blocks for the Primera machine. But in this case, I don't need it because I don't have the So when we take out the samples, we use the window called the uh, macroscopy. And then I have to scan in the barcode that I have. And then I just double check that the patient name is correct all the way. And in here, um, the mic where the microphone is, is where I dictate the uh, sample. But since I'm doing it in English, I won't be using the program because we do everything in Norwegian. So, <laughs> so by reading the um, uh, information that we got, it says that it's a piece of uh, tissue and it's three times four millimeters and it's on the inside of the right cheek of the patient and they might think that it's a uh, polyp. So when I take it out, I make sure that I can tell uh, how many samples are in here and it's just one. And you always double check the glass to make sure that you're not throwing any sample away. And then I just like to dry it up a little to make, to make it easier to observe the tissue. So as you can see here, uh, it's quite white and it's a little bit round in shape, but when I turn it around, uh, you can see what is the subcutaneous tissue. And the top here is the mucosa. And the reason why I can identify it so easily is by looking at the side of the sample. The mucosa is always a very thin piece of, uh, a thin layer. Uh, and as you can see here, you can see the white layer and you can see a little bit like whitish yellow layer. And the smooth white layer, that's the mucosa and everything underneath is the subcutaneous tissue. So that's usually how I identify it, by finding the thin mucosa compared to the more rough subcutaneous tissue. So when I have localized it, I measure it and I also describe it. So this one is uh, six times six times three millimeters. I'm just gonna write that down. And when I'm describing it, I'll describe it as a um, polypus uh, piece of the tissue uh, where I can see the mucosa and it's white in color. And then, uh, since the piece is 6 times 6 times 3, it's not so big, so then I can divide it in two. If it was bigger, I might have to divide it in three or four pieces. So when that's done, just gonna get a scalpel. 
We don't have any scalpel, so I'll just use a bigger knife. And since this is an oral sample, they want us to divide it um, to where it's the longest. So instead of dividing it here when it's the shortest, I'll divide it in two here. And I also have to make sure that the pieces are as equally as big as possible. There. And now that I've divided it in two, uh, this is the part where I cut it with the knife. And here you can see very easily uh, the mucosa layer, which is very thin, and the subcutaneous tissue. And when I'm going to put them inside of here, since this is a cassette for automatic embedding, we have to use these plastic containers uh, to put the tissue inside. So when I'm done um, cutting it in half, I have to make sure that the orientation is also correct. Um, when we're sectioning them on um, uh, the machines that you just saw, we want to make sure that we can see both layers in the tissue. So, if I were to put it down this way, where the subcutaneous tissue is, you'll only see the subcutaneous tissue in the, in the glass afterwards in the microscope. And if I were to put it on the mucosa layer, you can only see the mucosa in the microscope. So, to make sure that I have both layers, I have to put it down where I cut it in half. And I also have to make sure that the mucosa layers are facing, uh, so then it's easier for the pathologist in the microscope to um, compare the two mucosa layers. So then I just put them in here, side by side, and I just close it like this. And now it's safe in the container. And as you can see, here is the mucosa and here is the subcutaneous tissue on the outside. And then I just put it in here and the sample is done. And I'll just dictate it as well so you can see how the process is. Uh, so when I'm doing the recording for the sample, uh, I always say how many glasses I've received and I say the number, uh, the lab number that the patient has received and the patient's last uh, or the surname. And then I start dictating, um, recording what I've seen. white in color and I'm saying I'm also saying that I'm gonna cut it in half and put it in one cassette so when you when you follow the sample throughout the lab uh, you know exactly what I did and also that there's no sample left and that everything is taken out and then I just put it in here which is formaldehyde I have to save the recording, of course. We have some lovely ladies that are secretaries who do the writing for us when we have to record it. And then the next sample is the same thing. I make sure that the, that the sticker that we put on here in the lab also matches the sticker that the doctor put on and also that the cassette has the correct lab number. And here it says that it's soft tissue from the right side of the tongue. And it says that um, the mucosa has, has become thicker and white in color. And the, the dentist wants to know if there's hyperplasia because of irritation. So then I'll just open the sample. 
me take out what I have. And I can see that it's one big sample. Uh, you can obviously see that it's from the tongue because you can see the um, papillaries. And when I turn it around, uh, the tissue is more brown in color and that's the subcutaneous tissue. So this is the upside of the tongue, what you see when you're sticking your tongue out, and this is what's on the inside when you cut it open. And as you can see, it's also quite white in color. It's not like a pinkish, reddish color that the tongue usually is. And that can be because of the hyperplasia, and sometimes it can also be because of the formaldehyde, because the formaldehyde uh, can darken the color when it's been processed. So this is the same thing here. I'll just measure it up. And when I'm measuring, I want to measure the longest side first and then the smaller side, and then I want to measure how thick the piece is. And also you can see that it's quite, it's not um, like smooth as this last sample was, and that's probably because it's from the tongue area. So with this sample, I'm also going to cut it in half uh, during the, long, the longest part. And also as you can see, um, it's been divided slightly in two, and that might be that when the dentist took it out, they might have cut a little bit wrong and decided to take a bigger piece, but it won't affect uh, the sample or the rest of the process in any way. So now that I've cut it in half, I just want to make sure that I uh, have oriented it correctly. And as you can see, the white layer is where you can see the top of the tongue, like the mucosa. And then the more darker part is the subcutaneous tissue. And what I do here is exactly the same as the last sample. Since I want to see both these layers, I have to put the part where I cut it down. And the same with this one, and I put the tongue side together. There's not always room for these bigger samples than the smallest one, so I'll just use the medium-sized one. <coughs> and just close it up carefully so that the pieces don't move around. And I also make sure that I press down the lid as carefully as I can, but also making sure that the tissue is on the same level, that there's not one piece of tissue that's not pressed down properly. Because if it's not pressed down properly, we'll have to take it out of this plastic form and we'll have to manually embed it afterwards, and that leads to more work. And then I just put it in the cassette and the sample is done.